In this video, we're going to look at the three distribution diagram for one sample proportions. You will be required to provide a hand-drawn three distribution diagram in your written reports for each one sample proportion hypothesis test and for each one sample proportion confidence interval. These diagrams will demonstrate your understanding of the process and make it easy to create a required, the required R script for the test or the confidence interval. Although we will be talking in general terms, it might be helpful to have some specific examples in mind. So consider these populations. All the fraud complaints in Alaska. The children in a gifted and talented program. Maybe all the women over 50 years old in the United States. Or maybe all the aboriginal prisoners in Australia. Or batteries produced by a company. There's a number of different variables that could be associated with any one of these populations. Suppose the variable we're concerned about with fraud complaints is if the fraud complaint was for identity theft. So therefore, parameter of the proportion of the population of, the, of all the fraud complaints in Alaska that were for identity theft. In the children in the GT program, in the accelerated program, we, the variable might be is a student in the program an only child or not? In the case of women over 50 years old in the United States, we might be interested in knowing are they having regular mammograms, a health issue. In the case of Aboriginal prisoners in Australia, we might be concerned about whether they died in prison, a social justice issue. In the case of batteries produced by a company, we might be interested in if an individual battery was sold to the government. Population parameter is going to be the proportion of the batteries produced by the company that are sold to the government. Each of these examples are the per population parameter is going to be a proportion. Because you will need to hand draw three distribution diagrams for your written report, let me sketch a three distribution diagram for proportions here. The underlying conditions are that we've got some population. Population is in that circle. And we have some subset of the population that fits into a particular category. Then the population parameter of interest is what proportion of the population is in that category. It is the probability that we pick someone at random from the population and they end up being in that category. So the proportion is a, is a probability. If we look at a sample of size n, that's exactly the setting for a binomial probability distribution where x is measuring the number of individuals out of the sample of n that happen to be in this, in this uh, subclass. It might be that we would pick a sample and have none of the individuals in the sample be there's zero, or exactly one in the sample, or exactly two, or exactly three, all the way up to exactly n. And the binomial probability distribution tells us how, what the probability would be. What's the probability that we get exactly one? I'm going to show that probability as in kind of a bar plot here. Uh, the probability of getting exactly one, of exactly two, of exactly three, all the way up until we get to the probability of getting exactly n of them, all of them, in that sample. We learned about these binomial probability distributions in Module 5, and we know that the mean of this distribution is going to be n times p, and that the standard deviation of this distribution is going to be the square root of n times p times q, where q is the probability of failure, or in other words, 1 minus p. Now, what we're interested in doing is converting this binomial distribution to a distribution of sample proportions. If, for example, we got exactly 3 in the sample, then the sample proportion would have been 3 divided by n. We can convert all these numbers to proportions by dividing by n. So the mean of all the sample proportions will be this mean divided by n. The mean of all the sample proportions 
will be the proportion from the population. The standard deviation of the set of all sample proportions will be this amount divided by n, which you can check the algebra, is the square root of p times q divided by n. Now both of these are just binomial probability distributions. Here we're measuring things in terms of uh, sample proportions and here we're measuring things in the terms of the number of successes in a particular sample. It's well known that these will be normally distributed if n times p is greater than 5 and n times q is greater than 5. So under those assumptions, the distribution of these sample proportions could be well es estimated by a, a normal distribution and with the high point here at the, at the mean and if we went up one standard deviation and down one standard deviation, we would be concave down through this part and would be concave up through this part. Now because this is a normal distribution, we'd be able to convert things to, to z-scores. If this distribution is viewed as through z-scores, then certain things will happen. Remember that the z-score tells how many standard deviations something is away from the mean. So this mean will be a distance of zero standard deviations away from the mean. So the, this mean comes to zero. One standard deviation above the mean will go to one standard deviation above the mean. One standard deviation below the mean will go to a minus one. And this is normally distributed. So its curve much, looks much like this. The high point will be here. One standard deviation above will be about 60% of that high point. One standard deviation below will be about 65%. will be concave down through this part and concave up through this part. Now if we had some value on this p hat axis, say that we had this particular p hat, then it's going to be converted down here to the same position in the standard normal curve. So it's going to be down to here and be a z value there. And that z value can be calculated. Remember that z is just how many standard deviations we are away from the mean. So if we looked at p hat minus p, that would tell us what this distance is, either positive if we're on this side or negative if it's on this side. So p hat minus the mean of this distribution, which is p, then we'll divide by this standard deviation. Now because this standard deviation is such a special one, we're going to give it a special name. It will be called a standard error. error. So z is going to be p hat minus p, the distance that p hat is from the mean, divided by this standard error. That will tell us exactly what that value is. Okay, there's the three distribution diagram for proportions. We'll use this diagram in two ways, one to do hypothesis tests and the other to do confidence intervals. It'll be used differently in those two situations.